So yeah, Freedom Fiends, Freedom Fiends live here. Yeah. Uh, Kevin McKernan, our friend, the DNA scientist, said that people who hold advanced degrees in one field often feel qualified to give extensive opinions in other fields about things they know nothing about. And uh, that's kind of been my experience with start smart statists. And I had a uh, an experience today with someone adding me on Facebook and then uh, looking up voluntarism because I mentioned it and then wanting to argue with me about it. And I wanted to send her to go read uh, Anatomy of the State first. And she got really upset and said, what's wrong, little boy? You can't debate with me? Yeah, I win, basically. And I uh, got ruder from there. And then I blocked her. And she you know, yeah. had advanced degrees in things some statist who was very anti-Muslim, anti-Islam. And the guy was like, um, a, had a physics degree. He was like a PhD in physics or maybe a master, some kind of higher postgraduate degree. And Will was like, yeah, well, that doesn't give you the right to comment on history or sociology or, you know, religion. Like I sit there and study the Quran or whatever, and uh, you don't. So what gives you the right to say that you're the authority on it when... You have a degree in physics. Great interview, by the way, with Will Coley on the gumbo. It was. Your it first was. Uh, gumbo contribution, and I really like it. And uh, I think I owe you one twentieth, uh, no, one two hundredth <laughs> of a Bitcoin, because we've had a one tenth of a Bitcoin donation on the gumbo, and now you've okay. produced one twentieth of our episodes. Of, of the so. content. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, I'll have to up my ratio and, and add yep. some more. <laughs> so, yeah, I had an experience today with someone like that. Someone added me on Facebook, a uh, friend of a friend. I don't know her. And uh, I immediately, whenever people add me on Facebook, I immediately post a Freedom Fiends spam on their Facebook. Yes. You know, because they, spam, cause they, they added came to you. me. They added me. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. you know, and then she commented, uh, huh, Austrian economics and voluntarism. I didn't know what those were and I Googled them. And uh, I didn't like it, so I want to debate you on here yeah. about this. And I said, well, I, can s I see that you have advanced degrees in biology and art, which is a really weird double major. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I Maybe said, she you know, wanted to draw frogs or something. Yeah, and I said, <laughs> I said you know, that'd be like me saying, uh, I heard you mention abstract art. I didn't know what it was, and I looked on Wikipedia, and now I think it sucks, and I want to debate you on it, <laughs> you know? And yes. and she's like, she's like, uh, when ad hominem, she's like, oh, what, are you a scared little boy, and you won't debate me? Scared and I said, little uh, boy. I said, well, first of all, debate involves give and take, and uh, starting a good debate, you can't start a good debate with an ad hominem attack, <laughs> you know, that's not a debate. That's a, a kindergarten shoving match in the in the school yeah. yard. And and I said, um, I'd like to have you read a uh, fifty page PDF. I was going to give her Anatomy of the State. Um, and I said, you know, that'll get you up to speed, and then we'll have something to debate about. And she's like, I don't have time for that. You know, <laughs> I I win. You're turning down to the I debate. Win. But she didn't right. say I win, but more or less. And then she said, you know, and I said, well, that's not really a debate. And if you don't have time to read. You know, a one hour, do a one hour reading on something you know nothing about. Uh, why, how do you have time to do a debate on Facebook? That could take yeah. days, you know? Seriously. Um, and, and she said, that's it. One more and you're unfriended. What? And yeah. Yeah. So I blocked her. I unfriended her and blocked her. Okay. Which, which isn't me winning. It's me saving time arguing with status. Cause, you know, Ben Quaker put it really well. And people have actually been quoting this of him saying, like, you know, if libertarians aren't made uh they're born and yeah i would Although say this, I, think he, I, I think he was quoting somebody else when he came up with when he said that on his he? cast though yeah we'll have to go back and listen to it, it might have been uh, oppenheimer i don't remember the name but it was somebody else some yeah. other libertarian og that had well, said I'd, it i'd say that the corollary is that statists aren't made they're born and someone who's that ah. obviously like violently defending the state and bashing anyone who dares come near their god of the state uh is not going to be convinced and there's really no point in talking to them yeah yeah it's a waste Although of time I, you know it is a waste of time although i don't know if, if libertarians and status are necessarily born but i think once you're set uh you're pretty much you, you maybe you are pretty much set I don't but know, I don't man, because I was, I was pretty solidly a statist from my government upbringing. Um, you know, when you met me, I was down to minarchist. But wait, before that, like five or ten years before that, you know, if you'd asked me, I would have definitely 
tried to offer an opinion about guns, which I knew nothing about, you know, and I would have said, oh, I think that only the police and the government should have guns. And if citizens have them, they should be very heavily regulated. I would have said, I think that, uh, you know, everyone should pay their fair share of taxes. I would have um, I would have said, I don't really like cops or feel comfortable when I'm around them, but I'm really glad they exist and the world would be a worse place without them. I would have given you all those arguments. Okay. Um, but I wouldn't have been mean or you, nasty about it either. But you think beneath the surface you were always a libertarian, and then once that was revealed to you, you yeah, it made you sense. You embraced it. Yeah, yeah, it was like. So, so you're saying that there are some people that don't have that innate sense that'll allow that to be revealed to them. Yeah, I mean, I liked what Will Coley said about how he became a Muslim. I mean, he's a white boy from Tennessee, and you know, yeah. became a Muslim, and that's unusual. And you asked him about it, and he's like, well, you know, I was talking to this guy, and he said, you know, from what you say, I think you're a Muslim. And he's like, I don't know anything about what being a Muslim is. And he's like, yeah. I think you have it in you. Go check it out, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he did, and it fit, and then that brought him to libertarianism, or I guess pseudo-anarchism, as he put it. <laughs> But then he went further. Yeah. And he also said that a lot of uh, Muslims in America are embracing libertarianism and uh, anarcho-capitalism like a higher percentage than the general population because they're so disappointed with both. You know, the Republicans want to scapegoat them and kill them and the Democrats want to forget they exist and kill them, you know. Yeah. Or kill them for humanitarian reasons, quote unquote humanitarian yeah. reasons. <laughs> so, yeah, e either way, they're screwed. And I guess that's a pretty intuitive thing. It's just sometimes you... Uh, that that's not necessarily a thought that would occur to a regular person in the regular course of their lives, but it seems completely intuitive, right? Um, there's no place for Muslim Americans in the Democratic or Republican Party. So, yeah, I mean, I, I could definitely see them reaching out and trying new philosophies and new ideas. Not that <laughs> that being a Democrat or Republican means you're into philosophy, but you get the gist. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... We are about to – we don't have a whole lot of time left, but I think we should give out the call-in number just to let well, people know. Let's give it out after the first break. If We got, we want to talk about Peter, Peter the Elder Bruegel. Ah, your favorite. Yeah, you've been obsessed with him. Yeah, yeah the artist I really like. I mean, I, I've known who he was. I first heard of him in the Selby movie when I interviewed uh, uh, Michael Silverblatt from, um, from Bookworm Magazine, who's a real heavy hitter NPR guy who's like, you know – I mean, he interviewed the author of the Satanic Verses during the fatwa with the guy in the studio. That's how, like, up there this guy is. And he said, you know, Selby isn't so much a writer. He's a painter with words, with of like landscapes of, of demons and degradation and and fa failure, like like her Bosch or Bruegel. And I was like, I knew who Bosch was, but I looked up Bruegel, and he's he's brutal, man. I mean, it, I think Death Clock would have them hanging in their their study, and uh, yeah, yeah. And I think that Toki's parents in Death Clock, the Reverend and Anya Wartooth, are. Uh, are based on the style of uh, Bruegel, how they're drawn. Right, and the reason you came across Bruegel again was our new blog, the Freedom Fiends blog. Um, isn't that a Bruegel painting at the at the banner? At the yeah, top? I thought it was Bosch yeah, at first too. But, and he's influenced by Bosch, but he was later a uh, Dutch 16th century artist. Uh, yeah, it's called Mad Mag is the English translation of it. It's basically a woman leading a rebellion into hell. Yes. <laughs> Religious art is so often brutal, man. I mean, he has one of like Jesus carrying the cross that looks like total torture porn. It does. And it, it's amazing to look at, though. It's very evocative. And it was interesting, too, because the bad guys on it are completely uniformed. And anybody who's a libertarian would immediately recognize that that, that is some form of the state. Jesus was Jesus, killed by the government. Whipping him. Yeah. 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 And Jesus is just sitting there downtrodden. And all the people in their normal clothes are, are either like looking on like, oh, my God, this is a train wreck or or in, in some kind of horror. Whereas as the state goons are just like another day in the office. You know, I actually heard Hubert Selby Jr. mentioned in a stand up comedian's uh, rant uh, as Patton Oswalt, one of my favorite oh, comedians. Yeah. And he was talking about like, it was the only fat humor I've ever liked. He was talking about how like, yeah, I'm fat, but you know, I don't really like the, the meetings where you go to lose weight as much as like, I mean, I have these friends who are recovering addicts and alcoholics. Their meetings are dark and twisted and layered. And you know, then you go to the fat meetings. It's like, yeah, I was eating extra cake and it wasn't very good. And he's like, <laughs> I want to go to a meeting where it's like a Hubert Selby Jr. share about fat. Like I was living in in Juarez with a 13-year-old obese prostitute. <laughs> yes, yeah, she kept squeezing mayonnaise into my mouth while I was naked and rubbing <clears throat> olive oil all over my belly. 
Uh, be a little darker and more layered than that if it was Sylvie. But yeah, he went into it. It's good. So yeah, Bruegel. Bruegel good, man. Check him out, y'all. I'll <laughs> Bre- link him. Bruegel good. I'll link him. Bruegel All good. Right. Worms. Yo. Yo. What's up, Fiends Dave? Live. Yeah. Chilling. What's up, Michael Dub? We got a caller on the line here. It's uh, awesome. David. Where are you calling from, David? I'm trapped up in Minneapolis, man. What did I hear about Minneapolis recently in the news? Oh, uh, didn't the cops shoot somebody last week? Well, that could be said of anywhere, but <laughs> anywhere with a population of people. Um, right, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, what's uh, what's on your mind today, Art? Yeah, I had sent you an email a while back, and I you know, talked about how I really like the one aspect of The Fiends is how you guys recommend really cool film and music and books. And, and paintings uh, now. Paintings, paintings. paintings everything, yeah. right? <laughs> So, you know, I you know, wonder. I, a- I wonder if my need to discuss Bruegel today was my way of like, like silently fighting with that woman who had the degree in art without her even hearing it. You know, like, oh well, maybe, yeah. I didn't think about that until just now, but yeah. Yeah, that happens though. I mean, it's such a subjective thing, right? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, when yeah. I uh, when I sent you an email, I mentioned that, and I got to tell Nima too, like. Uh, I own me and all the music from Right Arm of Wyoming. That's what I listen to when I box. <laughs> awesome! <laughs> I just you, love it, man. Do you picture you the hyped. state? Do you picture the state on your your opponent's face? Oh, absolutely, absolutely! <laughs> I got all kinds of flags around the heavy bag. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Nice, nice. So you're always punching the flags. I love That's it. That's right, man. Got to got to fuck it. them all. So what's the uh, what's the hip hop you've discovered recently? Well, it's this little little group out of uh, Australia. Their name is Bliss and Eso. That's E S O, and they're kind of a. I don't know. They might not be for everybody, but I kind of like them. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm always, of, I'm always uh, into checking you know, new stuff out. Yeah, give it a listen. I mean, there's if you get into it, there's a lot of cool hip hop out of Australia. Yeah, huh. I, I, I would have never even thought to look to Australia for hip hop, but um, <laughs> I guess I know, this, but I, this Bliss and Eso group will be their representatives as I as I check them out. Well, give it a, give it a shot and see if you like it. I don't know. Maybe it'll work. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely appreciate the the recommendation. I'll check it out. So you're you're it's sort of a give and take. You you've appreciated us recommending things to you, and so now you're recommending something to us. Oh well, yeah, I mean totally. I got to be honest. If I'd have never listened to the Freezing Fiends, I would have never started listening to Bomb. Oh, Bomb. There's and a blast I love from old that. punk man. I mean, like Iggy and the Stooges was you know sorry guys, but to- totally my favorite band. <laughs> it was one of mine too. It still is. I actually really like some of uh, Iggy Pop's solo work. I really like his record, um, American Caesar. You ever heard that? You know, I don't know if I've listened to that one off the top of my head. I really like the older stuff better. I like the song Dirt. I've been done. I don't care. That one? I just love that uh, Open Up and Bleed. Well, Metallic KO is pretty cool, too. And, uh, you know, any of the Stooges, I mean, it's in a way, they kind of invented punk rock. I mean, they at least kind of invented the the guitar sound of punk rock. And I interviewed uh, their guitar player in my movie, DIY or Die, How to Survive as an Independent Artist, before he died. Have you seen that movie? Uh, I have not. I'm going to have to look for it. Well, are you um, a, do you do torrenting? You know, I haven't done it yet. You should, uh, there's a, there's directions on how do to do it. it. You should go to uh, and this is legal torrents. This is stuff I made that I'm sharing. It's fiend stuff in my movies. Uh, if you go to the Freedom Fiends website at the very top, there's a little link that says Torrent Club. And if you go yeah, to that, I it. it explains you how to do it. And that movie and my other movies are on there. And Nima and my movies and Nima's music and well, not Nima's music yet, but it will be. And uh, it's good stuff. And you can help the fiends by seeding. And I was gonna say about seeding too, like. Even if you don't feel like seeding our stuff 24-7, I encourage everybody to download it in their torrent program so if something happens to us, you can turn it on. You can turn a switch, and all of a sudden, it'll be available again. You'll have it. I'm, I'm going to have to do, look into doing that. I just haven't started it yet. Yep. Well, there's step-by-step instructions and downloads of free stuff in there. <laughs> uh, make sure you use Peer Block, which we link, and uh, make sure when you install uTorrent, you refuse all the like. Do you want to add the Ask Toolbar and crap like that? Hey, Don. Yeah. Hey, I had to throw you a movie too. What? Because I know you like the design films. Have you ever seen a documentary called Art and Copy? No. I'll look that up. It- 
it's all about advertising and the old school guys who would put up like billboards and single page advertisements and how they, you know, in one word tried to get you to like a, a, a you know, some something you could buy. Nice, huh. nice. So kind of like the psychology like of advertising kind of angle. Yeah, well, at least that's what I got out of it. I'm sure if you okay. talk to some kind of marketer, they'd, they'd have a whole different view on it. But, you know, Michael, in the past, you've always recommended stuff that I absolutely loved. So well, I wanted to talk. Like we're on the same page. There's a movie you and I've seen that Nima hasn't seen that we can talk about and leave him oh, out of the conversation. The Apostle. Gang me up, gang up yeah, the, me. the Apostle with Robert Duvall, where he plays a fallen preacher. It's an amazing movie. I recommend it highly. Yeah, it's kind of a good view on like how people treat preachers in the South, isn't it? Yeah, and there's a lot of truth in it about, like, you know, when he's kicked out of the... Well, I guess this is a spoiler, but, you know, schisms do happen in new churches form, and half the church goes with them. And, uh, you know, I asked my wife when we... We, we loved the movie. We, when we were done, I was like, you know, what do you think the moral of that is? What do you think the uh, the tagline would be of that movie? And she's like, uh, she thought for a second, she said, even the fallen can lead you to victory. And I think that's a really good description of that movie. Yeah, because he kind of did have a redemption, if I recall. Yeah. Yeah, he made a lot of people's lives better, even if it was by uh, spreading the news of his imaginary friend. I still liked him a lot and <laughs> liked his church. Well, it's an interesting concept, too, the traveling church. I think a lot of people would, would find that kind of very foreign. What do you mean? Well, he kind of, as I recall, he bounced around a lot in that movie. Geographically or emotionally? Correct. Geographically. No, nah, there's two... Look, well, at the beginning... He's living in Dallas, and he's he has a church there, and he's touring to other nearby churches, like within the state and maybe the next state, but he's coming home every weekend. Uh, then he does what he does and has to leave town, and he goes pretty much straight directly to one other town in Louisiana, and the rest of the movie takes place there. It doesn't bounce around that much. Well, I haven't seen it in a while. So. <laughs> yeah, well, there's kind of a montage at the beginning of him preaching with the uh, the black preacher that's his partner at like 10 different churches, everything from like mega churches to tent revivals, you know, like with 20 people right, in them, right. all in the same week, like just kind of showing how devoted he is to he'll preach anywhere, anytime. And uh, he does not seem to be all about the money, and he really seems to believe, I mean, they show him in his private moments, and he's praying really hard. Uh, you know, he's for real in his heart. Sure, yeah, I'm not, I mean, yeah, but I, to me, it just seemed kind of strange because, you know, as I grew up, you went to the same church with the same preacher for, you know, 20 years. Yeah, I mean, I went to a church like that that was, you know, a big stained glass church, uh, Episcopal right. church, and, you know, occasionally there'd be a visiting minister, but it would be from the next county, and he'd go back after church, you know, to his home. Uh, but no, I mean, think about it, like back then, there wasn't the internet, there wasn't a lot of TV when that kind of preaching began. Uh, I mean, really, it's like first century apostle Jesus, you know, like they traveled, they, they wandered to bring the word and that's how the church was spread. And there's a lot of people who say that's how you spread, you know, the idea. And even AA actually formed out of a group. I made a mistake last week. I said it was the Oxford group. Uh, that was actually formed out of the, I was talking about the Washingtonians, but then that turned into the Oxford group. Washingtonians broke up because they strayed from their primary purpose and got involved in politics and banning liquor. Um, then the Oxford group was learned from their mistakes, but then they did kick Bill Wilson out for getting too preachy. Uh, and, you know, but he believed in first century Christianity, and that's how he spread AA. He said, it's one man to another, one man preaching to another, anywhere you, anywhere you, they want, the Lord wants you, you know? Sure. So cool, man. It's good to have you on. I'd like you to call back anytime. First time yeah, caller I and good, will good when topics. I get the chance. Yep. All right. Thanks, Great man. Great with you guys. Worms. Have a good one. Yeah, take care. We're going to go sell some things here. We'll be back. <laughs> want to search porn in private? Or maybe you just want to talk to your friends without some tech goon hired off a pizza box snooping through your private thoughts. MetroPipe VPN is a secure computing service operated by privacy-loving anarcho-capitalists. Accounts can be had for as little as seven fifty a month. They take Bitcoin, don't keep any logs, and hate nanny intrusions as much as you do. Get a 25% discount by going to metropipe.net slash fiends. That's metropipe.net slash fiends. Should decisions on what you put in your body be left up to people whose very job depends on keeping certain plants illegal? Or do you believe in freedom of ingestion? The Genome Project is a cannabis science community founded by a leading DNA scientist. We fight ignorance with information. 
We don't have all of the answers, but we put all of our proceeds into finding them. If this requires sequencing the genomes of a forbidden plant, we've done it. If it requires leaving the country for the free pursuit of science, we've done that as well. The Genome Project is an ongoing crowdsourced experiment in free pursuit of the truth on cannabinoid sciences. Join us and participate in studying Mary Jane's genome. Get the app by searching Jane-Ohm on iTunes. The app is only $1.99 and all proceeds go to furthering and disseminating scientific truth. You must be 17 or older to download the app. Search Jane-Ohm on iTunes. That's J-A-N-E-O-M-E. What's up, Michael? Yeah. We're going to talk about auditing yeah. the Fed because uh, this thing's been going around as it often does on the internet saying, the Fed was finally audited. Here's the results. They stole $72,000 per American and gave it to foreign banks before the first quantitative easement. And But you pointed out something interesting. What was it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's dated. The article is on before it's news. It says, 100-year history. <laughs> We're posted today. They are startling. Talking about uh, Fed audit results. Um, it says it was posted on a senator's website this morning. But if you click on the senator's website, it was posted. It was posted, you know, recently. But the date of the actual audit was July 21st, 2011. Yeah, so maybe this should have been on afteritsnews.com. <laughs> afteritsnews.com, yeah. And some of the numbers bandied about, uh, I How feel about after, like... Afteritsoldnews.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the numbers are shocking, but I feel like I have heard them before. Uh, basically, $16 trillion given away from the Fed um, in secrecy, which is just the normal way the Fed operates. So nothing normally untoward. Nothing out of the ordinary there. Um but sixteen trillion to different banks, uh, both domestic and foreign. Uh, I feel like Ron Paul's been saying that though forever. That the well, Fed also, is, yeah. is giving away billions of dollars to banks, domestic and foreign. And auditing the Fed is about the only thing Bernie Sanders and Ron Paul agree on. Bernie Sanders is the only avowed socialist in the Congress, Senate, or Senate in the in the whole Congress, uh, including the Senate, and. I also kind of think like, yeah, okay, we kind of knew this all along. Now it's confirmed, I guess, a year ago, but people are still passing it around like it's news because that's how the internet works. People are still carrying signs that say audit the Fed. Maybe they missed this memo and nothing will change. It's not, you said, it's not like, you know, Ben Bernanke's going to go, okay, you got me. Here's your money back. <laughs> you know, and every American's right, going right. to get a check for $72,000. Right, right. Yeah, the power, the most powerful man in the world isn't going to be like, oh, well, <laughs> you found out what I do. So. Interesting. Are you saying that Bernie, that, that the head of the Fed is the most powerful man in the world above the U.S. president? Because that's usually well, reserved for the U.S. president, that title. I, I think that case has been made by people. I think Ron Paul has made that case as well. Um, Bernanke controls the money, right? I mean, he has more money to throw around than Barack Obama. If he if he can authorize $16 trillion uh, just on his own whim. Without the um, president or Congress's involvement. With, without without yeah. any political discourse about it one way or the other, or at least mainstream political discourse about it, other than uh, this is going to be bad maybe, but we don't know, and, and Fox News kind of stuff. Um, Fiend phone. Ber Bernanke Fiend can pretty phone. much... Well, fiend okay. phone. I, I guess we'll see what the fiend. No, we'll about. just say who, Ben's more powerful. Ben, Ben's just gonna have to sit here while I finish my thought. I'm putting Ben on a shelf for a second. Um, hey Ben. Hey. Ben. Hello. How you doing? Good. Hang on a sec. So, <laughs> so um, you know, I think there's two takeaways here. One is everyone's been yelling audit the Fed forever. Apparently, it happened a year ago and it didn't change anything. And uh, people are still yelling audit the Fed. Um, the other thing is. The way the internet works and the way news works, you really got to check your sources and at least click on something instead of just reposting or damning or praising based on the title of an article. If you have time, it's good because uh, if, you, if you have time, <laughs> yeah, I don't have time. But, um, yeah. you know, really, if you think about it, it this kind of reminds me like this has been I've been I, I posted this to 10 people this week and 10 people posted it back to me because they got it from the people I gave it to. And, uh, you know, it kind of reminds me of did you ever get the cookie recipe? emails or the Cookie recipe <clears throat> emails well no. there's an email that goes around that's basically a chain letter you know it's a cookie uh -huh. recipe uh in an email it's it's a variation on something that happened in snail mail before the internet that's one and then there's another one that says congress is planning to tax every email five cents to protect the post oh, yeah. office write your yeah. congressman bill number blah 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 from senator so-and-so and if you if you search it on snopes or whatever it's like that was something proposed in 1991, I think, and it was 
shut down and you know it didn't happen and that senator hasn't served for that many years and uh but people who just get on the internet still forward this thing. Whenever I get either of those emails, I say, welcome to the internet, and then block the person. <laughs> you block them, you don't help them along the way? No, no, because they're going to just send dad spam. You don't, you, don't, you don't have time for no, the dad spam. They're dad spam. All right, Ben I'd Quaker. Like, I like to read the dad spam, but Ben go ahead. Quaker. How are you doing, Ben Quaker? Hey, guys. I just hey, wanted ben. to uh, uh, clarify uh, my quote here. Ah, uh, good. Excellent. Yes, please. Uh, the quote was originally from Frank Charteroff back in the 60s, Charter. amazing guy. And what he said was, you cannot teach anybody anything that he does not already in a real sense know. Uh, neither education, background, income can explain either the socialist or the libertarian. Whenever you try uh, any of these criteria, you're faced with cases that refute your premise. And then in, in a later, in, later in the same writing, he says... Um, there, there are many who are instinctively repelled by government intervention, but who crave intellectual support for their inclinations. Uh, it is to them that, we, that the proponent of libertarianism must address himself. The socialist is beyond redemption. That is to say, the libertarian teaches not to make libertarians, but to find them. I would just take the last line of that, because <laughs> it's really wordy, and I think in bumper stickers. Yeah. Even though I criticize well, people for uh, – anyway, go on. Well, this was in uh, – I, I had brought that up in, in um, contradicting the, uh, the right reverend uh, uh, Walter Block, uh, who – Are you being sarcastic calling him I the am, right reverend? As, you, as you, a got Quaker, a pod, I, you got a pod beef going with him, huh? As a Quaker, I am more than sarcastic. Hey, if you, if you take up our offer to be a guest blogger regularly on uh, Freedom Fiend's – blog which he said you don't have time for but if you do ever have time for it um i will make a special category called uh with that w walter block walter so you can <laughs> yeah i really like walter block a lot and he's done fantastic things for the movement it's just i worry about him he's he's done some really strange things in the last year or so has and, he acknowledged your existence yet oh no huh? no he doesn't know i'm i'm so I, tiny I've he would I feel like he does a lot of important theoretical work, though. I mean, I, I think his stance on abortion, evictionism. I mean, I love that that idea of, of finding new ways to problems that that uh, don't fit in people's traditional paradigms. Um, so his thoughts on abortion that, you know, maybe with technology, we can actually evict the fetus if the wo woman doesn't want it in it. And then the, the fetus doesn't have to be killed necessarily. Yeah, but you see, he's been saying that for 20 years, so, I mean, what are you doing for me today, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> today, he's just, today he's just rolling on the ground worshiping the feet of, of Ron Paul, and that's really <laughs> yesterday's news, you know? you gotta, you got to yeah. stay with the movement. We're a, we're a happening thing. We're moving along. This bus is on, on the road. Okay. okay. <laughs> this bus is on the road. I like that. <laughs> no, but he was talking about, uh, he's obsessed with the word converting libertarians he wants to ah. convert he says ron paul is the only one that, we, that can convert libertarians and we have to get behind ron paul because he's the way to convert libertarian you're not mm. converting anybody you, you know? know this is interesting john kennedy posted uh he's listening and he posted on facebook and said libertarians and statists are not born that denies free will and reason i kind of disagree i mean i kind of think that statism is uh with with some people you know, I, I believe in that idea of political ponderology, that something like 6% of all people are naturally sociopathic and 14% want to follow sociopaths, and the rest are able to be swayed to their natural inclination by reason, uh, or or even not to, the, to, 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 to what they believe is reason. Um, I kind of think of statism as like a birth defect. I really do. <laughs> Abs absolutely. No, I, I believe that. Uh, and, and let's put it a little bit uh, on harsh terms. If you think about it in a purely natural setting, let's say we're running across the savanna, you know, chasing our latest meal. Um, there are some people that are going to have certain advantages over others. And for the last 10, 15,000 years, statists have had a slight advantage. Um, and, and that's why they're kind of in charge. But under natural circumstances, because I would argue that the last 10,000 years or so of the, or, of the domination of the state is not natural to the human experience. So uh, in a natural setting, which is, you know, when the state collapses, we'll get back to a natural setting. 
All right, Ben Quaker. If you want to stick around for the next uh, bit here, Ned Ben, or yeah, let's keep Ben uh, over if he'll stay. Okay, sure. Okay, this episode okay. is called "Statism Is a Birth Defect." We'll be af- uh, back after some anarcho-capitalism. Or I'll keep an eye on it. We're, work we're recording. Go no ahead. Okay, you got the off-air clock. stuff. You guys talk. Okay. Okay. Ben, tell us more about why you think uh, statism. statism isn't natural to the human experience. Because a lot of people, especially statists I talk to, they're like, oh, well, there's never – and you, you've sort of addressed this. You know, There's never been an anarchist society, and people seem to think that the state is natural. Um, can you give us a quick and dirty why they're wrong to think the sure. state is natural? Yeah, no problem. Uh, for the last hundred years, the state has been dominant uh, throughout the world. But if you go back further than a hundred years, the vast majority of the human population in the world at that moment and the vast majority of the pro- population of, of the world that's ever existed, existed in a state-free form. So in other words, the empire of China, which was has been the largest uh, centralized state uh, in history, a uh, hundred years ago, the empire of China only uh, actually could reach maybe a fifth of the land mass that it does today. The rest yeah. of the population of China was stateless. And, and throughout history, most of the human population has been stateless. If you want a so, libertarian paradise, move to medieval China. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, it's, uh, so the state actually is the anomaly throughout history. Like if you just drop the, uh, drop the point... Uh, anywhere on the time scale and say, okay, like uh, 200 BC, the Roman Republic was really powerful and blah, blah, blah. And there were Persians that were powerful and there were uh, Egyptians that were powerful. But the mass of the population of, of humanity was stateless. The state only existed in those little, you know, mostly little valley regions within the area of those empires. Okay. Almost let's all imagine, of Northern Europe was free. Go ahead. Let's let's imagine the status counters with well, yeah, back then, um, you know, they didn't have all the modern conveniences we have now. Um, so the state has been dominant for a hundred years, and look at how far the world has progressed. We have all these amazing roads and cars and airplanes, and we have and movies where Tom, we have movies where Tom Cruise shoots a drone out of the air with a machine gun in Mission Impossible Three. <laughs> yes, and you yes. asked me what you, had, you asked me what the uh, organization is called in there. Is it the CIA or what? And I said no. He, Tom Cruise's character works for the IMF, the IMF, which is the Imp- Impossible Mission Force, which sounds like something <laughs> a kid or Homer Simpson would make up. And it's also International Monetary Fund, which is the uh, basically the PR firm of Ben Bernanke. <laughs> right. So um, they're trying to make they're trying to make giving away all our money that they print. Uh, look like a heroic thing by tying it to the guy that can shoot a private drone out of the air with a machine gun. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, we have machine guns, drones, international monetary funds, and impossible impossible mission forces. Um, and the state's been dominant uh-huh. for a hundred years. So status tells you that. And what do you say? Well, um, you could you uh, there's there's an actual argument in logic, and I I can't remember the name of it, but. Uh, you, you're not connecting a cause and effect here. You're saying one exists mm-hmm. and this happened, therefore there this go. happened because that exists. But that's right. not necessarily putting any kind of logical tie from one to the other. You could also say that automobiles have been around for a hundred years. So literally, you could make the argument the sa- using the same f- form of twisted logic. You could say we have the internet because of automobiles, even though the right. two are not connected. Or you could right. say um, the same thing about airplanes. You know. The, the fact is, uh, you, or, you, or you could say just as validly from a logical argument, you could say that um, the, the, what we have. Three. Uh-oh. You're still there. You're still we're there. back here on the Freedom Fiends. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're back, yeah. We're back on the Freedom Fiends. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess you'll just have to listen to uh, the archives to hear what me and Ben were talking about yeah. during the break. Yeah. Um, but I was basically asking Ben, okay, so a statist says, um, well, look at all, the state has been dominant for 100 years, which Ben has conceded, and now we have all of these uh, fantastical inventions like roads and drones and airplanes and machine guns and Mission Impossible forces. Um, and Ben says, well, you can't really equate, there's no cause and effect relationship there. You're not positing a causal relationship. You're just saying these two things exist at the same time. Was that the gist of, of your answer to that, Ben? Yeah, correct. Uh, the human population up to up to a hundred years ago, the vast majority of the human population was stateless. 
Uh, it's only been in the last hundred years that the state has really turned into the thing that it is right now. And so if we look at the progress that we've made in the last hundred years socially and scientifically and mar- in the market and everything like this, it's, it's an illogical flaw to try to relate the growth of technology in the market uh, with the growth of the state. There are two things that you could, you could also say that they grew independently or one in spite of the other. Uh, you, you can make the argument in any way because uh, right. there's not necessarily a, a cause and effect. Didn't Rothbard um, call it the world's greatest non sequitur? Non sequitur, yes, exactly. <laughs> well, speaking of non sequiturs, in that that part that people didn't hear and will have to go listen to the archives to hear, we also completely reviewed the movie um, Mission Impossible Three. <laughs> Did com- a complete review? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> making fun of them. Yes. yes. Yeah. And, Although and, you, and you, we you... solved the problem of perpetual motion. We did. Yeah, <laughs> so you'll, you'll want to check that out. <laughs> yep. Well, Ben. You got more? Or are we going to open it up for more? Um, I think we kind of left the actual radio listeners dangling there on uh, so, on a point. So, but I can't I can't remember what the point was right before the break. <laughs> okay. um, well, y- did you have more to say about Walter? You know, Brock? you just you just actually pointed out, <laughs> and we've talked about how you shouldn't point out on the air errors <laughs> because if you don't have the solution for that, you just made a problem by pointing that out. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think Nima had the solution, though, and that was in reference to Walter Block, that, that he's a poo-poo head and we shouldn't listen to him. <laughs> <anymore. laughs> okay. No, no, no. Oh, man. Are you, really, are, you just, head. are you just tugging at his shirt sleeves trying to get him to go acknowledge you? I want him to give me a free book signed. So I, I, <laughs> that's, your, that's your method for getting free books is bashing someone and everyone, everything they do? No, I really appreciate uh, what he's done. Um, I I, just, I don't know who he is. I'm like Walter Block. Who's that man? I'm gonna go listen to. I'm gonna go listen to Dead Kennedys and read Boston Tea Party. <laughs> I guess I, I'm familiar with him because he regularly posts on Lou Rockwell's blog. Who's Lou um, Rockwell? He's the 108 year old guy that that you're always talking about. I no, I um, never say that. It, Lou Rockwell. It's it's one of my favorite blogs to visit, other than our own blog, Freedom Fiends. Um, <laughs> You love to visit your own blog, Freedom Fiends, which uh, which you 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 had the you and your wife had the idea to set up, and then I set it up, and now I'm doing all the cat herding while you guys are out playing golf. <laughs> <laughs> it was tennis, not golf. Oh, so oh, excuse me. <laughs> I was at the country club playing tennis. Don't I? I wasn't a golf player. <laughs> yeah. So yes, I'm the one yes. that's like teaching all of our bloggers how to like properly use a, an apostrophe s. And uh, yeah. Well, I didn't think that that would be a task that we would have to do. Um, but well, it is. You know, a lot of people can write pretty well, at least on a short thing like a blog. But they just don't know or forget the basic rules of grammar. And I've had three or four people I've had to walk that through yeah, already. It happens. And, it happens. and there's people who have never used WordPress before. And, you know, but their ideas are great. So I'm going to, I guess, be the English teacher and cat herder to get everyone whipped into shape. You know, I actually tried doing a collaborative blog before, Libertarian Punk. With some guys off the site conservativepunk.com, which this was a branch off of or a schism from. Uh, and, you know, there's some people that just couldn't take critique and couldn't take criticism and, you know, didn't want me to tell them, hey, you, you're spelling the president's name wrong while bashing him. And, uh, you know, they ended up like saying F you and I said F you and they ended up, they're the people that come on and like, uh, you know, like, hack our blog or go on there and post uh-huh. a whole bunch of racist stuff even though they're not racist just to mess with me and they're the people that got my wikipedia article deleted so uh i hope none of the fiends uh writers are like that i don't think they're going to be i think it'll be good because these are better yeah. people yeah because they're yeah. fiend fans they, they totally are they're fiends yeah through and through thoroughly vetted <laughs> yep. but um back back to walter block so so he's uh he's a university professor i think at loyola university and he's He's written some good theoretical stuff about, you know, how things could work without a government. But like Ben points out, he was kind of weirdly cultish on the whole Ron Paul thing uh, since the last election started. That's when I started noticing it. Um, Did you start noticing stuff like that before, Ben? Or are you mostly referring when you're critiquing him to his almost passionate cult-like obsession with with Ron Paul is the answer to liberty? I... I, I I think the problem with him is his uh, cult-like obsession. Well, he calls it, he, he says repeatedly that he's in love with him. And I don't think that's <laughs> ne- necessarily a sexual thing, I, I, but he right. says that over and over and over. So what do you think? But 
Um, on the other hand, uh, this all started in, in as far as I know when he decided to bash Wendy McElroy and Stefan Molyneux, uh, uh, right. who were both saying they anarchists. weren't true libertarians or tr- because they they wouldn't vote for Ron Paul. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he made horrible straw man arguments against him and was just really nasty with him. And then he's done this with a couple other people since then. So, I, you know. You know, you know I, wonder, you I wonder tell. where he goes from here now, though. I mean, Ron Paul, obviously, that answer wasn't the right answer to the question. So where do you think he goes from here? Do you think it, it'll sort of back off and he'll, he'll get back to his regular, more studied self? Or uh, what do you see? Is it kind of like he's jumped the shark or what? Uh, well, he has come very, uh, very boldly out uh, for Ron Paul in 2000. What is it? 2016 16. or whatever. <laughs> OK. OK. So I guess yeah. that answers the question succinctly right there. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. just released a book that's basically he says it's his love letter to Ron Paul. And he's oh. basically demanding that Ron Paul <laughs> run in the next election. Wow. 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 I, I don't think Ron Paul would do that or has even considered doing that. Uh, I don't think he could be convinced to do that. I mean, he's retired from the the politics game. I mean, isn't that isn't that what's happened? You know, I'd I'd like to interject here. Okay, I want to change the subject completely. Sort of. Uh, I don't care about these people. I don't care about Pod Beef. If you want, hey, you know, you can definitely come over on the on the blog and write um your your hate letters to him. I would love to have that be a regular column. I just want to talk about status and and uh, people people are bashing me on Facebook right now. My friends for saying that statism is is a, a birth defect. Um, <laughs> me saying that is macho libertarian flash. If you don't know what macho yeah. libertarian flash is, you know it's basically when someone says, "Well, I believe in stripping government down to the bone," and you're like, "Really? I think that kindergartners should be able to have machine guns and crack sold in vending machines." You know, uh, it's it's trying to like. Not necessarily one-upmanship, but just say, like, reduce it to no, no rules, and here's how it would be. And like Randy England said, like, no, those are the arguments I try to avoid because I'm trying to get status in, and I take a kinder, gentler approach, which I can see. But Macho Libertarian Flash is fun, and it has value. It, it is fun. <laughs> it, is, and, it has value for making us laugh. Yeah, and the thing about statists, the ones that are really... A lot of them are really mean in defending statism, and you can tell yeah. those are the ones that will never change. Yeah. Um, I really believe it. I, in my experience, the ones that will never change are the ones who you say, well, you know, maybe there could be something with the roads that could be done without the guard. You're like, they're like, no roads, children, think of the children, horrible. You're a fucking idiot. And they always reserve, they, they, res, they resort to all sorts of logical fallacies and then accuse you of resorting to three logical fallacies because they've heard the word logical fallacy and only heard the most common three explained to them, which is straw man, <laughs> red herring. And uh, ad hominem. Ad hominem. They use all three of those, but they accuse you of all three of those. When in fact, you know, there are hundreds of types of logical fallacies, and a common one, statism, status use, is the appeal to authority. <laughs> that, that's actually where we were right before, uh, right before we got interrupted with all the advertising and so forth last time. When I went off on a tangent about it. Yeah. Well, there. Yeah, so, so we we brought it back full circle. So you brought something. Sure. Done. You you, you <laughs> dropped the ball. Then said we dropped the ball. Then I picked the ball up, and then you mentioned that we dropped the ball and pointed it out. Uh, it's, yeah. So we're breaking all the rules here of radio. Yeah, but no, that, no, that, no, because he allowed he allowed us to come back full circle. So they, we we forgive him for that because that was a good thing. Yeah. See, what I say is, if you if if you pointed out that you did it wrong, but then do it right, you're not um you're not pulling the curtain back. You're being a teaching hospital. We're exactly. teaching how to do a live radio show here while we're doing one. It's it's redemption. Yeah, Ian. So so uh, yeah, pod beef. So uh, <laughs> speaking of uh, of my, my of my rant, I can finish that then. That uh, in uh, running across the savanna chasing your food, there were certain advantages to some people, and for the last hundred years, certain statists have had an advantage, and they've dominated the rest of us. But when the state, you have falls, ten seconds to finish this. When the state falls, we'll have the advantage. Yay! Yes. Woo! And that was Ben Stone of the Bad Quaker Podcast, which you should all listen to because it contains more truth than the Freedom Fiends, except when he's on the Freedom Fiends. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ben, thanks for calling in, man. Thanks, man. No problem. Later Worms. on. Peace. Yo. Yo. It's the Fiends. What's up? Hey, Nemo. How was your break? Did you take- I took a nap. How are you? Did you really take a, a nap? 
Oh yeah, a, so, a seven minute al- nap. Set my alarm for seven minutes. Went to sleep. Snored. Wow. Yeah, I'm kidding. Impressive. I'm totally kidding. I was. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing the uh, writing the blog post for uh, this episode. Oh, awesome! Awesome. Doing the yeah. show notes. Yeah, a couple a little ahead of the game. <laughs> a couple things I want to cover here. One was. Uh, um, where to find our blog is you go on freedomfiends.com and you go scroll down on the right and there's a picture of a kitty using a computer that says Fiends Blog. Yes. <laughs> of course, can... because cats run the internet and so yep. you can't do any kind of thing on the internet without having cats included. And you should subscribe. It's a different uh, RSS feed than our feed for our podcast. Yeah. Now, I don't usually use the RSS feed to, to view blogs. Like if you subscribe, what you, you get our blog post in your email or how does that work? Uh, there's different ways to do it. You can subscribe by email to our, right. not to our blog, but to our podcast, and you will get an email every time a new episode posts. And uh, we never sell that or rent that or spam you or anything. It's just when an episode posts, and you can un- unsubscribe anytime. Uh, the RSS feed, you subscribe via a podcatcher, which can be either you know iGoogle or it can be iTunes or there's a whole bunch of freestanding freeware uh, podcatchers too, but I use iTunes because it syncs with my iPod. Okay, so will iTunes show me my our blog posts? No, no, okay. no. It's only then media. Why, then why why have an RSS feed for a blog then? Uh, because you can subscribe in a non podcatcher, just an RSS feeder feed reader like iGoogle uh, or uh, uh, let's see. I think the Opera browser has one. I think um, I actually think that. Firefox has one built in. I've never used it. It'll open up in your bookmarks or something and update your bookmarks. I don't know how it works, but okay. Um, okay. Are you asking what's the point of an RSS feed period or only for non-media? For non-media, for for blogs. So you don't have to go check. I mean, you kind of do it the wrong way or you do it the way that's the hard way, which is, you know, you go check Lou Rockwell every morning when you get up, whereas you could just have be subscribed to the RSS. Oh, he doesn't have an RSS feed because he's 108. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he hasn't no, entered. The, he hasn't. Go he on. hasn't entered the 90s yet. Okay. There's no. There's their, no. Their, their blog's a little bit different, but I, I like its format. It's, well, I it's, maintain. I maintain that it's if, bare bones and pared down and simple. I, I like maintain it. that if you don't have an RSS feed and you you can't do commenting, it's not a blog. It's a website. Okay. Okay. To me, I, I consider anything that regularly posts. Um, new bits of information and or writing uh, in 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 a general kind of area of thought. I consider that a blog. Well, you haven't entered the 90s either. <laughs> okay. Man, I'm full of piss and pot know, beef today, huh, man? I, pot I, beef I soaked like, in urine. I like vinegar. the way I do things. I don't, I don't want to go to a central location and read all the blogs. I want to go to there if I want to go to there. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, what I do, though, so, is... Some, some, I do, some days I don't feel like looking up antiwar.com because I don't want to see the horrible things that, that we're doing in the world. Right. That the well, US what government's I, doing in the world. The way I do it is I'm subscribed to like 15 or 20 blogs and podcasts, and I do it all through iGoogle, and I just ignore it if I'm not in the mood for tyranny. Uh, and... I can scan the headlines of the article, you know, the articles or the or the podcast posts on my iGoogle in one page in, you know, yeah. a minute I can look at all of them and see which ones I want to look at. Yeah. Without although having to go I, that saves a lot of time of going to twenty different websites. Although iGoogle considers itself obsolete now. They're gonna be getting, yeah, they're rid, getting of rid of it in it. a year. Yeah. yeah. I'll figure something else out. I, yeah. I used podcatchers before that. There's one called Lemon or Lime or something. I don't know, there's a bunch of them. Uh, actually, there's a bunch of them listed. If you go to the Alex Jones site, there's a page like, what is a podcast, you know, for people that <laughs> haven't entered the 90s yet. And uh, it explains them and has some links to some. Although he also has a link to like the Alex Jones branded podcatcher. I mean, I would be, I think I'd rather download something from the, the CIA than download something from <laughs> Alex Jones somehow. <laughs> Not that he, he equals the, the, but it's like, why why do I need an Alex Jones branded one? And what advantages and disadvantages are there going to be of that? Because Alex's son needs some new shoes, Michael. Be considerate here. Because he needs a higher wall around his house. Remember he was <laughs> he talking about? He needs, right. He needs man, a the deeper bunker to live in. The government's so inefficient. They're going to take a year and a half to fix this swimming pool. And I just had some construction guys over at my house, and they built a 10-foot wall around my house in two days. And I'm like, of course that's the example you have, Alex Jones, building a concrete bunker around your house. But yeah, yeah. I think although, I'll leave I, Although him, I'm man. jealous. Yeah, yeah, yeah me I probably too. would too. <laughs> yeah. 
I want I want one of those homes that's converted uh, missile silo from from the Cold War days. Yeah. Well, I'm bashing like, him. You're not, which is good because we're trying to get you on there. Oh, I'm not, oh, I'm not bashing it. him. I just he upsets me. Too much truth, man. Too much truth. I don't know what it is, but it's you know. I don't know if He's, it's the the facts of the matter that upset me when it comes to Alex Jones. It's more the tone. I yeah, mean, like, he gives, he gives it, me bad like you dreams. say, it, it gives it gives you bad dreams. Yeah. He also yeah. is a real statist constitutionalist. You know, his solution is to fix the government, and I think it's beyond that. Especially when he's saying like it's all been taken over by international bankers. That's where he takes it to every time, and it's like, right? Really, if that's the case, you think you can fix this system? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, okay. So you kick all the international bankers out. You reset everything, like Fight Club. You know, you He's bring everything yelled, back yeah. to zero. <laughs> you're gonna, He's you're been, gonna end up with the same people dominating the same system again. Ben Bernanke. You gotta get Jr. rid of the system, folks. Ben Bernanke Jr. will take over. Yeah. But uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, quadricopter he, Ben. He's been yelling audit ben. the Fed louder and longer and more frequently than anybody forever. And it okay, it happened a year ago. What changed? <laughs> Although I, I think one of the reasons people are still push it for audit the Fed is is this was a, a GAO audit and I don't think it was very extensive. It I wasn't it was independent. Pretty, it was not independent. It was it, the rats it was guarding. It, it was the rats right. counting the cheese, man. Right, and I think uh, it's kid gloves. I think compared to what it could have been. Um, I mean, I think if you were going to do a full audit of the Fed, you'd have to have literally every communique they've had uh, since their inception to do it you know yeah. completely truly and not have it be filtered through any kind of government uh entity like the gao worms worms yes the state uh, you, are worms the state are completely worms they're beneath In, worms insignificant worms yes although um yeah somebody posted a thing about how great worms were on my facebook so maybe maybe we shouldn't call the state worms because worms are actually beneficial to the world they get they get rid of all of the the crap in the in the soil and turn it into more useful nutrient rich stuff. Um, they yeah. they help the they help the decaying process of of natural order and the state uh, does sort of the opposite of that. The state keeps the decay there to block new innovations. <laughs> At least the way I see it. Yeah. Are you uh, stealing time from the fiends over there? Yeah, I'm working on the fiends. <laughs> I thought I'd let okay. you talk. I talked a lot in the first hour too. You did. You got it. You, you got it, Nima. Go, 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 go. I got it. Go. <laughs> um but yeah yeah the state the state is not uh worthy of being called worms i don't think so the so yes not worthy of of our respect of that level of respect of that worms bring <laughs> yes. yeah yeah you know yesterday um we were looking for charlie at night when we we're going to bed and we couldn't find her the cat charlie and uh, mm -hmm. we ran all over the house, looked in her usual places. She wasn't in the backyard. I was convinced she'd uh, jumped the fence, which she hasn't done in like two years. Like she's getting a little too old for that. We were really worried. And Oh, is she declawed too? No. Okay, no, good. I would never do that. Good, good, good. And uh, no. Um, no, she still occasionally like, kills a bird or a mouse and brings it to us too. Oh, that's not, right. not as that's much good. as she used to. But um, we found she was in the car, in the car with the windows all rolled up like you know, standing on the dashboard, which sounds like animal cruelty at all, but it wasn't in the hot sun. It was in the cool garage. And, you know, she was real comfy. She was in there a couple hours. She didn't pee or poo or, but we, you know, we found her. Problem solved. So how'd, how'd she get in the car? Uh, as she, when we're loading and unloading groceries and the car's open for a you while, leave she, the door open. she okay. often yeah. jumps into the car and I shoo her out. We just didn't see her. We didn't see her get ah. in there. Okay, okay. It's she was going funny. to those kind of lengths to get away from the squittens. I think so. She hates the squittens. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. For those who don't know, Michael has three cats. One's a really cool kind of turtle-colored OG-type cat. And the other two are like spastic, odd creatures <laughs> Young that Michael brothers. calls the squittens, yeah. uh, which is a Japanese mythological half-squirrel, half-cat. <laughs> yeah. And that, that is very uh, very apt for, for, what are their names? Peanut and Fuzzy. Fuzzy. Yes, Peanut. Yes. Uh, Fuzz Bucket McFluffernutter and Peanut McFluffernutter. Right, right. Crazy cats, yo. We're going to go sell and, some um, stuff. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. Yeah. 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 Worms. Peace. Worms. Word. You're listening to the Freedom Fiends Podcast. 
Freedom Fiends is now available for 24-7 streaming to your iPhone, Android phone, or other chromed robot turd. Click on the streaming audio link on freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. Fiends live. I'm Nima Vidati. We got Michael WD on the other end. And we're going to go ahead and give out the call-in number here yeah. at the top of this segment. Uh, we haven't given it out yet, which is interesting because <laughs> it's been like an hour and 20 minutes. But here it is uh, well, if you'd like every, to talk to us. Everyone's been yelling at me on Facebook with comments while they're listening anyway. So Yeah, yeah we've, fair we've enough. We mentioned that. But if you want to use your actual vocal cords for the yelling, you can dial 307-215-5171, and you'll get to talk to us, uh, yeah, with your voice. It's 307-215-5171. And we also had a bit of um, news, I guess a little bit of house cleaning within the, the Freedom Fiends mythology, so to speak, don't we, Michael? Yeah, we're retiring the term Christian Sharia that we invented. Um, that you know, we for, invented? We, we did. We absolutely yeah, it's, invented it's, it's, that. It's, it's just totally funny how you said it. It was like Bender. Like me, Bender. <laughs> the greatest yeah. robot in the world. Is what? Um, is what? Yeah. Uh, no, what, what is? What, what is? is? We decided that... Uh, I mean, there was one point when I wanted to retire it because I thought it was insulting to Christians. And Christians had asked us to not use it, who were fans, because it pissed them off. And you were like, no, I think we should keep using it. And we interviewed a Muslim the other day who seems like the most stand-up guy in the world I've ever heard. And it really taught me a lot about Islam and taught me about misconceptions of it and how, like, you know, Glenn Beck doesn't know what the hell he's talking about at all. Hell no. Hell and, no. Uh, it took, you, it took you that long to figure that out? <laughs> yeah. Well, I kind of knew that by now, but I didn't know the details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. um, we realized that it's really disrespectful to Sharia. And Sharia is not this, uh, it's going to take over the world. It's a parallel thing. that It could work as a parallel uh, legal system. It's not, I, I don't want it in my, uh, I don't want to be subject to it. And But that's not what most of them are trying to do, man. So uh, I think it's insulting to Islam to call Christian Sharia sh- that you know when we're referring to american christian politicians and their supporters who want to like outlaw you know drinking and dancing and fornicating right. and it's not because we're trying to choose islam over christianity absolutely at all. not man i think at all religions all. are morally bankrupt <laughs> but, no, but i don't think idea. that i just think i i i, I really uh, I, I well, he, he, here's the thing. In the interview about Sharia, um, he posits more of a private law approach to it, saying that you know we, you would only ban things for people who are on board with being a part of the Sharia system, right? So, um, because in Islam, it's a sin to coerce somebody's agreement. So, if somebody agrees to a covenant and you coerce them to do it, i.e., if you force them to not gamble, if you force them to not do drugs or drink alcohol, then that's hypocrisy and it's a sin under Islam. So that is not what Sharia is about. Whereas when we are trying to talk about Christian Shariaans, usually we're talking about um, religious zealots using the state to force their prescriptions on other people. Like you must not drink alcohol or smoke weed. Well, which or happens? You'll throw in a cage. You know, and I was going to say, well, you know, and maybe one percent of one percent of one percent of all Muslims want to do that. Uh, no, I think that'd be more accurate. Um, number of the ones that want to use, you know, their own force and not government force to do it. But I think a lot of um, Muslim countries have laws based on, you know, the same as in America. I mean, a exactly. lot of our laws are based on, I, I would say 50% of America or 45% of America want to impose Christian uh, right. laws. 
but that that's the state using the theology yeah. to beat people over the and, head. And you know, that's the, true the in Saudi is, the state that's, is villain. that's true in any country in Middle East where you can't drink, you know? And yeah. and it's yeah. and it's a lot more severe punishments than So here. you know, it, that's another reason to retire the, the term Christian Sharia because it's also disrespectful, I think, to the word Christian. To Christian, because to it, Christian yeah. It, it's not actually Christianity that is, right. is causing this force. It's it's the idea of the state mixing with that and corrupting yeah. uh, the I mean, philosophy I think, of both know, Christianity religious, and religious Sharia. Religious statism would be a better term for what we're talking about. Ah, there you go. There you go. Religious statism. Cult yeah. cult statism. Yeah. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's um, – I don't know if we talked about this before, but – when when people do say that that you know libertarianism or anarcho capitalism is like a cult, and um, I really like the way Tom Woods put it. it was, oh, really? So the state isn't a cult with your uh, flags and your singing songs of past events yeah. and your uh, veneration of the founding fathers and almost worship of them. You know, and I would say that there's a whole uh, generation coming up now who are fiercely statist while rejecting nationalism or at least patriotism. They're statist in sort of a UN sense. I don't know what in a in a um, you know secular humanist we used to call Sharia, but a secular humanist uh, uh, you know what did I say Christian uh, Relig- religious religious uh, statism. statism yeah mm-hmm. yeah um, you know I I think that there's a lot of I mean I think the average or a a majority of kids in you know high school now public school if you talk to them and. You know, I think that they would fiercely de- defend the state, but are probably kind of turned off by July Fourth and you know flag waving and consider that something that gun toning rednecks do. But they really believe in the. I mean, it's more like yeah. it's more like they love you know SEIU and FEMA <laughs> than the state than the country. It's more they love CSI and Special Victims Unit. Yeah, you know, there's a new cop show every day. I think. I think that it's pretty. I think it's a government mandate or like some kind of tax incentive yeah. secret. Really, yeah. I, th- I think pretty soon it's going to be nothing but like the president speaking, and then that'll be like ten percent of the the TV, and then ninety percent cop shows and yeah. Fed game well, shows. I think what's worse is also these. These sort of pseudo reality shows, like on True TV. I was over at my father in law's house the other day, and, and sometimes he has True TV on in the background. And you know, I've seen some of these shows before, but there was one I thought was kind of egregious in ways. Uh, it was like World's Cops. Dumbest Criminals or something. No, it was World's yeah. Dumbest Criminals. I and, still um, like that one, man. It's funny. It is, but there was this one segment, right? Because the 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 format is they'll they'll play some clip, a clip, and then they'll have these like f less comedians comment on it, oh, try to make horrible. jokes about it. F list, yeah. yeah, beyond F list. Yeah, I mean, like the biggest star they have on there is like, who's the skater that like broke someone's ankle? I don't even know. DJ. Yeah, you don't know. Any, you don't know any of their names. Who's the skater I mean, that broke someone's had someone's ankle broken? Tanya Harding. Tanya Harding. Like Tanya Harding is oh, the biggest okay. star okay. that they have on there, and yeah, Danny yeah. Bonaducci. From See, the Partridge he's, he's, family. Yeah, they, they, they always have Danny Bonaduce. You said skater. I was well, thinking skateboards. I wasn't oh, even thinking. No, figure dance, skater. Dance, no, well, no, it's like both of those. The other ones are all comedians. Those two are on there trying to be funny. They're on there because they've both been arrested a lot. Ah. Or right. Danny's been arrested a lot. She's been arrested once for something pretty serious. Okay. Okay. There you go. There you go. But um, Danny's been thing. arrested with a tranny hooker and he didn't know, I think, wasn't he? With drugs and a tranny hooker, something like that. He makes jokes about it. He makes jokes about his own tranny hooker. Yeah, you no, know, he was my hero when I was a kid. I used to love the Partridge Family. I was—he was the one that was my age. So I was like, I want to grow up to be a drummer in a band with my family. Why isn't my family playing band instruments and, and, and talk about tranny hookers on media all the time? <laughs> well, you, you achieved it, Michael. I guess I did. I'm, I'm the low, the low rent Danny Bonaducci. So if he's F list, I'm like X or Y list. Uh, nice, nice, nice. No, no, because he's a. I don't know. I. If he's on that show, then he's got to be some some sense a d bag because these these people were were just ridiculous. There was this guy, he got pulled over by the cops, right? Um, he had a driver's license from a different state, but the cops said he didn't have the privilege to drive in the state he was in. He was in like Ohio or something, and he was from some other state. And so they they arrest him, and and these comedians are just like making fun of him, like, oh yeah, you had twelve points on your license. I can't believe you can't drive in that state. What are you trying to do? Drive. You know, the guy was trying to go to work, and the guy's sitting there getting hassled by the cops and saying, hey, this is like the worst I've ever been harassed in my life to the cops. And the comedians are just like ragging on him, like horizontal enforcement gangbang. 
Like, you're, such, you're so ridiculous. He's such a whiner. I can't believe he's complaining about the state taking his car away. <laughs> and it just just made me sick, man. Just made yeah. me sick. Yeah. People make me sick. Yo. I'm naked. Fiends. I'm naked. Oh. Congratulations. Yeah. I'm just changing my, my clothes. <laughs> I'm putting on something a little more stylish for the last couple segments here. Okay. Okay. See, I usually don't start the, the podcast by asking, Michael, what are you wearing? Yeah. And you say, nothing, Nima. Yo, nothing well, but a smile. You know, this is for the people that are watching our, our streaming video feed. Oh, really? Do we have one of those now? I don't know. You know, I uh, saw Tom Waits pro play. Provided courtesy of the NSA, of course. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they got cameras on us. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I saw Tom Waits one time on New Year's Eve in San Francisco. It was a great show. And about five times during the uh, the the show, he said, yeah, and, you know, everybody, we put a bottle of champagne under your seats. Don't open it until midnight. And there was nothing under the seats. It was pretty funny. <laughs> nice. Were people pissed? Nah, it was it was he was drinking champagne. I'd be you know, if you could bring your champagne to that show or buy it at the okay, bar. Okay. Bring your yeah. own champagne. Yeah. So we forgot something in our drug rehab two parter. Um Jim Jones ran a drug rehab. The guy from <laughs> for the guy from Guyana or the guy that went to Guyana and started the suicide cult, which oh, he, he's got not the, the guy, rapper. Not the rapper. No. Okay. And why would someone name he's named after Jim <laughs> Jim Jones, isn't he? Or is that I his name? think so, man. I'm not a hundred percent. Maybe that's his real name, but I had always thought because you know rappers like to name themselves after notorious crime figures like Noriega, and Jim Jones is such a bad, dumb rapper. I kind of feel like he he tried to do that. I know, like <laughs> but at big least Jim Jones. <laughs> okay, hang on there. I know you're drinking your your purple juice there, your, your syrup, but uh, don't choke. Mm, yeah, yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and uh, and tried to pick Jim Jones instead of you know yeah some, it's some like cooler even, criminal at least Noriega who is a horrible tyrant and murderer at least he like is thought of as powerful Jim Jones is only thought of as creepy and weak and weird you know like yeah yeah, yeah. be like naming yourself uh, I don't know Casper Weinberger or something no yeah um, although although after listening to a verse from Jim Jones you kind of get the sense that that maybe it is an appropriate name <laughs> it'd be like naming yourself as a rapper John Ashcroft you know <laughs> yeah yeah although isn't John Ashcroft a, a singer himself is he have you have you is yeah, he the one that's saying like when the eagle soars let the, let the eagle yeah. soar yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> which really I think was the beginning of that whole kind of like genre of country rock and roll patriot stuff you know that came out after 9-11 that was way uh, before 9-11 stuff is so horrible I know they show I, it on I, Fox I don't all even the classify time, it as music they have those Do people they? on Fox in the morning singing all the time yeah really like like yeah. like uh, like the church choir for, for the religious statist <laughs> Wow. Yeah, and there's no, I, extra I, points. There's actually some that are like active military. They have like a barbershop quartet of active military in their act military clothes singing patriotic Fiend phone. Fiend phone. Saved, fiend phone. Saved by the fiend. Fiend man. phone. I was going nowhere with fiend that. Fiend phone. I was going everywhere with that. Hello, Fiend. Who's this? This is Jeremy from Ohio. How you doing? Hey, Jeremy from Ohio. What's, What's up? What's up, man? I just wanted to bitch about the status. All right, bitch. A, go for uh, it. You're calling the wrong show. We are very pro statist here, and we're very offended. Uh, <laughs> and you had one of my uh, libertarian man crushes on earlier. That's when I started listening. Who, Ben Stone? Uh, yeah. You got a little. And, uh, you got a little imaginary bromance going with him. A little bit. Don't we all? He doesn't. It's a one way. <laughs> him a one way thing. Uh, him and it's who? Unrequited. Unrequited who? Yeah. Who, Who's your other one with? Me, Nima. I, I, well, yeah, it's light with you guys, but. Ah! I've got a thing for Larkin Rose. So. Oh, nice. nice. I could see that. Yeah. yeah I just you, know what? you know what's funny, though? All four of the people I just mentioned are ma happily married, too. <laughs> As am I. So, you know, yeah. all, we're all on the same page. Well, That's you know, I, I have the uh, the little the man crush on Ben Stone's mind, too, but I have his phone number, and I call him and talk to him for about an hour a day, too. I, I, don't, I don't have that, but I'm within driving distance, probably. So that, you should that, stalk oh, yeah. him, man. Ohio, I, have, yeah. I have his home address. Oh, I man. could. I, I choose Ugh. not to. I don't want I, to be too I would creepy. Probably, yeah. Yeah. I think. I think you ch chose right. I That'd would be incredibly creepy. But yeah, <laughs> I was poking him pretty hard today. You know, maybe I'll just have, give you his address and have you show up on his doorstep. <laughs> camp out. Funny. Camp out. You know, Henry Rollins. When I interviewed him, said that 
he'd had stalkers that had like camped out in the bushes outside his office and stuff. It was really creepy. When, when did you interview him, by the way? I interviewed him. Uh, well, he's in my movie, Hubert Selby Jr. It'll be better tomorrow, but that's uh, archive footage shot at Selby's memorial used with permission. I interviewed him audio interview only. And then I transcribed it for a book I wrote called $30 writing school, which I think came out uh-huh. in 2002 or 2003. So okay. around then, He's a cool guy, but I was listening. To, he did a podcast, the Disinformation Podcast, about two months ago. He's and a he statist. Is a hardcore statist. He really is. He's like yeah. idiotic. I mean, I couldn't believe it because he seems like a thoughtful guy, and it's just like, really? You yeah, know, he's he's of- donated a lot of money to the Southern Poverty Poverty Law Center too. Ugh. You know, and he believes he's fighting racism, but he's really you know <clears throat> demonizing Americans who aren't always racist and are not violent and lumping them in with you know people who blow up. Jewish schools and abortion clinics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know how you can be intelligent and not pick these things up because I think a lot of these statists are fairly intelligent. But well, we opened we opened this with, and I didn't get a chance to record it, but we opened this whole cast with me talking about having an argument with somebody who had you know double master's degrees and hearing the word voluntarism because I mentioned it and she Googled it and suddenly wanted to argue with me about it. <laughs> and uh, you know, we talked about how. Kevin McKernan, our friend who's a DNA scientist, said that he knows a lot of people who are absolute experts in one field, and that makes yeah. them often think that they have a right and you know duty to chime in with strong opinions in any other field. And um, Henry Rollins just defies logic with this because with his other stuff, he's so logical, and a lot of his really good, really funny, really pointed po- spoken word stuff mm-hmm. is about prejudice and contempt prior to investigation and bashing people who do it usually republicans but uh you know just he goes off about like like he has this one thing about homophobia he's like homophobia why are there still people who are homophobic i mean that is that is a wall to of logic to climb that's about as high half as high as the curb on the side of the road how are there still humans who can breathe and function who can't get three inches up from where they are and i agree i agree with him but then it's like you know the 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 barrier to to leap over to hurdle over to understand that statism is evil is probably about six or seven inches tall, and mm-hmm. this guy presents himself as and is perceived as a mental giant, and he's probably got a genius IQ. I've sat down and talked with him for an hour, and I can tell. And how can someone like that just love the state and defend it so damn much, man? It's a it's a religion, man. I the more and more I think about it, the more and more it it is it's a cult. It's a religion. I. I have a, I put a post on Facebook, uh, I was working and I just, there's, I don't watch much TV, but I threw C-SPAN on the other night when Michelle Obama was speaking, she's talking uh. about how great her <laughs> husband was and how much character he has. And I basically just put like, if you, if you're caging people for not, if you were in, you know, pretty an avid pot smoker, yet you are caging people for victimless nonviolent crimes, you don't have any character. And then I put... You know, if you, you know, if you support the war on terror, which has killed hundreds, hundreds of thousands of innocent people, you don't have any character, you know, and so on and so forth. Right. And the Republicans were the ones who uh, attacked me, my Republican <laughs> friends. And, <I> was, <laughs> wow. and then I thought I laid it out. Like, I feel real good about myself. I, I laid out these logical arguments uh, against taxation about how you own your body, you know, and, and no one can tell you, you know, a bunch of men getting together and writing on a piece of paper doesn't alter morality. And then like one of them's like, yeah, you just don't make any sense. Did, did like, they what? did they use logical fallacies on you and then accuse you of using logical fallacies? Yeah, you know, they didn't accuse me of using logical fallacies because I'm pretty sure, and they're smart guys, but I'm pretty sure they don't know what logical fallacies are. But uh, they sure use plenty. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just uh, it's frustrating. I've been meaning to um, do a lot of research on logical fallacies so then I can just start blasting people with them. You know, I know what they are. And I've well, always- we're, we're linking on today's episode, which will be up about an hour after the show. I'm linking a sh- list of short explanations of the 44 most common logical fallacies. Yeah. The I think is, I, a, I, um, I'll go ahead. Go, no, you go. I was going to say, I don't think the logical fallacies will really work on those hardcore statists that we're talking about. No, because statism I, 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 is a birth defect, man. Yeah, yeah, there are people <laughs> that are beyond help, man. The people that aren't too bought in, because at work this week, 
I was at the uh, distribution center. They do a lot of our, you know, assembly and stuff. And I'm in sales. And uh, we're going into was, we're going into a break here. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, wh- I mean, wh- wh- why don't you hold on for just a little bit for us, okay? Yep. Yeah, that's fine. Well, yeah. Last segment here. It sure is. So uh, I got an apology here. All right. I accidentally uh, I was I was trying to steal time for the fiends to work on the fiends. I was writing the post that we're going to have for this episode and um, without you know having the mb3 to put in it because it's not done recording it yet because we're making it right now live i accidentally i was trying to hit save draft and i hit publish and uh so <laughs> everyone that subscribed just got a rss notification or a um an email notification sending you to a post that when you go there now it's gone and it's going to say you know it's going to be our for you can go look at it and check out our 404 page which i'm pretty proud of it's a pigeon with an sd card on it telling people that they should be um saving fiends episodes so when we're droned they can put them on carrier yes. pigeons and share them <laughs> it is awesome so go visit it anyway it'll be worth your while <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but please wait because we'll have the the actual audio for the the live show up after yeah. that at some point um, I do want to give a shout out since we're in the last segment here to uh, Kevin Lamoureux, a big uh, fan oh, of the yeah. Fiends and he a supporter wanted, of the Fiends. He, he won a date with the Fiend. Won a date with the Fiend. Yeah, it is his birthday. Speaking of, speaking of man crushes, you got to go hang out. I don't know if you guys got man crushes or not. That was an interesting little comment. <laughs> ben, Ben's my man crush. Ben's my man crush, and I, oh. I stalk him on the phone. <laughs> And I was just uh, – anyway, it's Kevin Lamro's birthday, so I was trying to wish him a happy birthday on his Facebook, uh, but I was doing it while I was talking, so I just wrote birthday exclamation point <laughs> instead of happy birthday. <laughs> on people's birthday. birthdays, I usually put mew, <laughs> M-E-W, mew. two or three exclamation points. Yeah, yeah. I just put birthday, but um, in case you're listening, Kevin, uh, there should be a happy in front of that because happy birthday to you. Oh, I don't know. Birthday kind of says it. Yeah, I guess so. Fair enough. Do you know what I, I, no one knows my birthday except you and DJ. Uh, I don't put it on the internet. I put it by a couple weeks off. Um, or I won't say how much I put it off by, but, uh, it's wrong. Cause you know, you should know, I don't think you should ever put your birthday on the internet. It makes it easier for people to steal your identity and yeah. to, uh, you know, identify one fact pattern with another. Do you know about the new FBI thing? They just spent a billion dollars for a national facial recognition, uh, system. Oh, you know what? It's funny. Somebody posted on my Facebook wall on the the interview I did with Will Coley is titled Why Muslims Should Be Libertarian. Um, one of my friends posted a thing saying why libertarians should wear burqas and then posted the news item about the <laughs> FBI's face, nation, nationwide facial recognition well, system. Well, I'm sure they'll outlaw. I mean, in a lot of places, it's illegal to cover your face. It's illegal in New York City. And I think there's exceptions oh, really? for Muslims. Uh. Which is interesting because huh. if they're driving this whole thing on a false flag or a misconception that Muslims are the new commies and need to be watched like the USSR, the only exception for covering your face is the people they're trying to base and pin the whole thing on. Uh, yeah, yeah, good point there. Um, so is the FBI starting the research or it's no, already done? No, 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 no. This is, they're, they're putting it in. I mean, it's hooking up to like wow. street cameras cameras in walmarts cameras uh in stores that allow them to yeah they're gonna know where everyone is at all times and uh they said that they're gonna use facebook to improve their database because you know whereas a mugshot you have two pictures front and side facebook people have 10 to 20 pictures of themselves you know right. with different angles right. different clothing you know different weights different ages you know they can see like mm-hmm. if they want to know what you're going to look like in two years, they could probably know because they have a picture of you now and a picture two years ago. They can extrapolate that. So, yeah, they're just exactly. – uh, yeah. You know, there was um, one item I saw. Pre-crime. And, pre-crime. Exactly, pre-crime. But, but there was this uh, – I think it was a makeup design artist who had designed makeup patterns to throw these kind of facial scans off to confuse them. Uh, and I think it was resting on the idea of a certain kind of dissymmetry. Like you would have a completely different makeup pattern on one side of your face and a different pattern on the other. And uh, apparently that can confuse these uh, scanners. I don't know how effective they are, but I figure there'll be some smart people out there. I don't want to walk cool around with thing. like two colored makeup like a you know sports fan wearing his sports team colors down the two sides of my face. That's not how I want to yeah, live. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll probably just stay at home all the time. I do already, but you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, Alex Jones said, you know, now that now they, last year he said, well, now we have goons searching everybody and violating the rights in airports. Next year it'll be on the highway and the year after that it'll be in your living room. 
Mm. And yeah. this year it's on the highway. So, you know, they're doing random stops, Project Cobra, uh, different things where they just pull people over for no reason and, you know, violate their Fourth Amendment and search them without a warrant. Yeah. So you think it'll eventually it'll come to the point where you get a knock on your door, uh, say once a week at a random point, and the TSA agent comes in and surveys your apartment and tests your water to make sure it's yeah. not an explosive. Well, you know, I think that a way that they'll do that is just by arresting everybody for false felonies. You know, once you have a felony, a parole officer can come into your house at any time, and mm. I'm sure mm-hmm. they could bring a TSA agent or a DHS agent or a, you know, local local idiot trained off a pizza box working for some fusion center fusion center <laughs> yeah we just got a yeah. really nice God. we just got a really nice comment you're you're, you're, go ahead what? I'm what i was gonna say you're, you're making me depressed now man we're supposed to well, be well i have a really good here you know let's go lighthearted i got a, we got a really nice comment on guns and weed the fro- road to freedom from jim palamercio palmanicio uh he said job well done thank you for being true americans which, uh, okay. you know, I mean, we've said a lot of people call us patriots and we don't call ourselves that, but I'll take that as a compliment. Sure. Yeah. If you want to call us that. We're why true not? anarchist Americans. <laughs> there you go. We're true anarchists go. who live in the geographical na- area known as America. That's true. Yeah. I'm an American. And we're true. I think we're true. So, yeah. If, true. If, Thank if, you if, for if, being true. If, if you break both of those down there. Yeah. We're both of those things. We're true and we are American. We live in that. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I'm American according to America until they suspend my, you know, I'll, I'll never renounce my citizenship, but they'll, they could renounce. They, there's a thing. I don't want to go into that, man. They want to like be able to, you know, there's an NDAA thing where they can like remove your U.S. citizenship and then they don't have to like have any, you know, rights. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard of that kind Treat of stuff. Treat you like an enemy combatant for saying like Ben Stone did. We want to, sh- all we do when we talk on here is sharpen, sharpen the blade of liberty. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Man, you yeah. got to stop sipping that syrup. It, no, the syrup would keep me from Oh, popping. that's true. You know, what, you know what the syrup you, you is? You need some man? syrup. That's right. You yeah, I do. square I do. over there. Um, but I was going to say... You're smoking uh, Jankum. Lou, who's... Who's yeah? There, I'm huffing Jankum. I've got, I've got a little Jankum hose that goes directly to my room. <laughs> you got the Jankum vaporizer. Uh, yeah, the Jankum. Yeah, the E Jankum. <laughs> <laughs> e Jank. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, Lou, who's who's a longtime caller and on a our blogger. Show. He's a blogger. Uh, on the and Fiends now blogger. he's a blogger. Yeah, and he he wrote a great little uh, future fiction, or as we call it, tyranny tomorrow. And fan on our, fr- on fiend our fiction. Yeah. So you should go check that out. Um, uh, as as long as we're on the same lines of yeah, yeah it's a news item from two, It's you. a news item from the same day, but in 2016, several yes. people read it and thought it was news before they saw the oh, really? on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys got to get your your irony uh, radars tuned. Yeah, there. it was really really well done. And he's going to write some too that are the opposite. That are like you know eight years from now on our lib pair. Like yeah. mommy, what mommy? What's a gun ban? Right, I read, right. I read in this book about a gun ban. What's a gun ban? What's what's banning? Yeah, yeah. What what's banning <laughs> exactly? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but my favorite line from it, I think, was um, the the reporter sort of feigns to do uh, a man on the street interview with people, and one person's like, "Well, she signed the social contract in the FEMA camp, like we all did. <laughs> so I don't know what her problem is." <laughs> yeah, they put a gun to my head, and I was starving, and they offered me a bowl of soup or to kill me if I signed this piece of paper. So I signed this piece of paper. Yeah, they'll make the social contract an actual social contract, and, you know. Right, right. Right. Give so you you bread. You you'll it. get you'll get bread and circus like in the Roman days to sign it. <laughs> we'll either throw you to the lions or we'll feed you a crust of bread. Sign this. Hmm. I think I'll take the bread. Yeah. <laughs> Keep so, yeah, your damn good. circus. Keep your terrorism porn theater. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll just uh, entertain myself. Thank you. Yeah, that's what people describe the TSA thing as is um like security S- theater. Security theater. Oh, it totally is. It's totally the illusion is. of security. Yeah. You see that thing of um the video of the woman shot of her water. The TSA guy wanted to test her bottle of water that she bought after yeah. passing security, and um she says, <laughs> you know, this is just for retaliation, isn't it? And the guy says, yeah, it's basically for that. <laughs> retaliation the TSA guy for what? It. Had she been snippy with him and flexed yeah, her rights? She, Exactly. She had given him lip, so to speak. Alex he, Jones said he, he did that not that, kind of, that. He said that specifically is training for for FEMA camps or training for you know the work camps. 
A precursor. For bowing to, yeah. Well, let's get off that. The uh, printable gun thing got written up this week in the Huffington Post and on Yahoo News. And nice. both of them were like, the sky is falling. There's printable guns. The sky is falling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ridiculous but at least it's getting out there right i mean yeah. all the people that that aren't idiots will read that and be like wow yeah the yahoo one the basically is like, indeed bright the yahoo basically like quoted a bunch of federal gun laws and said this guy's either going to end up in prison or having his hand blown off or both wow. yeah way to encourage progress yahoo yeah screw it's been, you guys it's been a good fiends man yeah man we love you fiends peace i like you fiends Oh, come on. Show some love, Michael. I like them. All right. <laughs> I don't love about three people. All right, man. Okay. Worms. Peace. Worms. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal, or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money.